In this video, we're going to explore the get pivot data function. So if we try to write a formula in a cell and refer to another cell in a pivot table like this, so we write equals and refer to a pivot table, you can see here that we get this long function that is called get pivot data. So what does that function do? How does it work? What are its pros and cons? This is what we're gonna discuss in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so let's have an example to demonstrate the get pivot data function. So here we have this pivot table where we have the region in the rows area and the sum of sales amount in the summation of values area. And this pivot table is based on the data in this worksheet which is in a table called TBL sales. We also have a slicer containing our different vendors that is based on the vendor field in our pivot table. And let's say that we need to fill this table here having our different regions with the sales amounts for each region. And this is because I need to create a chart having the sales amounts for our different regions. So someone might ask me, why don't you just create a pivot chart based on the pivot table. And the answer is that I need to create a normal chart because normal charts are more flexible than pivot charts. So before we start demonstrating the get pivot data function, we need to know how to activate it or deactivate it. And to do so, you can just select any cell in your pivot table and then go to the pivot table analyze tab on the ribbon and under options, you'll see here an option called generate get pivot data. It's currently activated because we can see a tick mark beside it, but if I click on it, it will be deactivated. And now if I refer to a cell in our pivot table, you will see here that we just get the classic cell references instead of the get pivot data function. However, I'm going to reactivate it again because we need it for the purpose of our demonstration. All right, so let's try filling our table with the sales amounts for the different regions. So let's write equals and then refer to the sales amount for the center region that we have here. And let's go with that and press enter. And as you can see here, we get the sales amount for the center region. Now let's try dragging the formula down in hopes of getting the sales amounts for the other regions. And as you can notice here, we get the same amount for all the regions, which is actually the sales amount for the center region. So someone might ask me, why are you using get pivot data in the first place? Why don't you just use the classic cell references? So you can just write equals B4 and then drag the formula down and you get the correct numbers. And then you can just create the chart based on the data and Bob is your uncle. Well, that will work. However, if we change the structure of our pivot table, so for example, if we put the product category here in the rows area under the region, you can see here that our numbers get messed up and now we don't have the correct numbers. So this is one downside of using the classic references instead of the get pivot data function. Now let's press Control and Z to undo that step and even if we don't change the structure of our pivot table if we select alpha circuit as our vendor for example you'll see here that the number for the west region is incorrect because now the west region is referencing the number for the grand total and this is because alpha circuit as a vendor does not have any sales in the west region so you can see here that this is another downside for using the classic references to reference data in a pivot table. Now, this is where the get pivot data function gets into play. If we manage to use it correctly, that is. All right, so let's give the pivot data function another shot. So write equals and we'll just refer to the values here in the pivot table. In our case, it's the value for the sales amount for the center region. And let's actually dive deeper into the get pivot data function and see what the different parts of that function are. So as you can see here, the first input or argument is the data field. And the data field is basically what we're trying to calculate using get pivot data. In our case, we're trying to calculate or get the value of the sales amount. So this is the field that we're trying to calculate. 
You can also write sum of sales amount and that will still work as well. So if you press enter, you can see here that we still get the correct result. So you can either write sales amount or sum of sales amount as your field here. And then the second input is basically a reference to your pivot table. So it's called pivot table, but it's simply just a reference to your pivot table. By default, the pivot table argument is simply a reference to the cell on the most upper left corner of the pivot table, but it can actually be any cell in the pivot table. So if you replace A3 with A4, for example, the formula will still work. If we press enter, you can see here that we still get the correct result. Just make sure to absolute that reference if you're going to drag the formula down. All right, so the first two arguments or inputs, which are the data field and the pivot table, are the only mandatory arguments in the get pivot data function. And after that, we should supply it with pairs of fields and items. So you will give it the field and then the item under that field that you need to get the numbers for. So in our case here, it's the region field that we're trying to calculate. And we're trying to calculate the item, which is the central region. So it's currently hard coded, as you can see here. But what we can do to make it dynamic is to replace that with the reference of the cell having central, which in our case here is cell K4. And you can see here that the reference is relative. And that's a good thing because we're going to drag the formula down. So now if you press enter, drag the formula down, you can see here that we get the correct results for all the regions except for the West region. And this is because our current vendor, which is Alpha Circuit, does not have any sales in the West region. And we can get around that easily by wrapping our formula in an if error function and just asking if error to give us a zero in case we have an error and drag the formula down again. And you can see here that we get zero for the West region, which is the correct result because Alpha Circuit does not have any sales in the West region. And now the advantage of using the get pivot data function is that if we change the structure of the pivot table, so for example, let's drag the product category under the region here in the rows area. And you will notice here that we get the correct results even after changing the structure of our pivot table. So this is an advantage of using the get pivot data function, which is being able to get the correct numbers, even if the structure of your pivot table changes. However, there is one caveat, which is that the field you're trying to get the numbers for must be in the rows area or the columns area of the pivot table. So if we try to remove the region field from the rows area, for example, you will notice here that I won't be getting any results in my table on my chart. And this is because the results for the different regions are not visible anymore. Now let's press Control and Z to undo that. And let's try moving the region to the columns area and see what we get. And as you can see here, we still get the correct results of the different regions because the results are still visible in the pivot table. So we tried putting the region in the rows area and in the columns area. Let's try putting it in the filters area of the pivot table. And as you can see here, we don't get any sales amounts. And this is because the results of the different regions are now not visible anymore in the pivot table. But if we try to filter for a region here, let's say the center region, you can see here that we see the results for the center region, as you can see here, but only the center region. So as you can notice here, the field that you're trying to calculate for must be either in the rows area or the columns area of your pivot table in order to get the correct results. So this is one downside of the get pivot data function, which is that the results must be visible in the pivot table in order for you to be able to obtain these results from the pivot table. Let's put the region field here back to where it was on the rows area of our pivot table. There is also something else to note, which is that if we change the position of the region and the product category fields here in the rows area, so if we put the product category field at the top here instead of the region, you can see here that we don't get any results here for our sales in our table. And this is because now the results for the different regions are not visible 
in the pivot table. I'm speaking about the results for the different regions without breaking them down by the different product categories. So let's press Ctrl and Z to go back to the previous structure of our pivot table. So as you can notice here, the get pivot data function, although it's a powerful function, is actually not that flexible. So your best bet is using the get pivot data function in relatively simple scenarios like this one. If we try more complicated scenarios, so let's say that we would refer to the data point for the accessories product category under the center region. And if we copy the different categories here, we're able to get the sales amounts for the different product categories in the center region by replacing here the category name under the product category with a reference to the cell containing the category. So in this formula, we have two pairs of fields and items. We have the product category and a reference to the category, and then we have the region being the center region as well and this is hard coded so let's press enter and as you can see here if we drag the formula down we can get the sales amounts for the accessories and computers and mobiles this way so as you can notice you're able to add multiple pairs of fields and items to the get pivot data function to drill further into your pivot table now, if you don't add any pairs, so if you refer to any cell like this one and then just remove all the pairs that you have, because we mentioned before that these pairs of fields and items are not mandatory, they are optional because they have square brackets around them, as you can see here. So if you remove them and just close the brackets and press enter, you can see here that the result we get is the grand total amount, which we have here at the bottom of the pivot table, which is $502,615. So if you remove all the pairs here for fields and items, you'll just get the grand total figure for the field in your values area, which in our case is the sales amount. Now, personally, if I need to drill into my pivot table like this and get the sales amounts for the different product categories in the different regions, I wouldn't use the get pivot data function. And instead, I would use a lookup with multiple criteria. And I would do this by switching the layout of my pivot table to a tabular layout. So I'll select any cell in my pivot table and go to the design tab on the ribbon. And then under report layout, I'll choose to show it in a tabular form. And I will also choose to repeat all item labels. And then I'll just do a lookup in that table using any of the lookup functions. So VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, or the index and match pair. And I would just extract the numbers this way instead of using the get pivot data function because as you start adding more pairs of fields and items, the get pivot data function gets more complicated and less flexible. And in my opinion, doing a lookup with multiple criteria would be a better solution. And if you don't know what a lookup with multiple criteria is, I have a video about that. So I'll leave you the link down below in the description. All right, so to conclude, the get pivot data function is a powerful function that enables you to extract numbers from your pivot table, even if the structure of the pivot table changes. However, it's actually not the most flexible function as demonstrated in this video. So you should know it, but you should also know other solutions and workarounds to use in case the get pivot data function does not solve your problem. All right, so what do you think about the get pivot data function? Do you think that you will use it in your daily work or do you think that the flexibility issues that it does have would deter you from using it? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to learn more advanced pivot table tips and tricks, I have created three videos in the last three weeks having loads of advanced pivot table tips and tricks. Links to the videos will be in the description. Also, if you'd like to take your pivot table game to the next level and supercharge your pivot tables with DAX formulas and data models using Power Pivot and DAX, then you can join my Excel Power Pivot and DAX course for beginners. I'll leave you the link for the course with a special discount down below in the description. And please make sure to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon 
to be notified with all future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.